the pre-tribulation rapture, a chemical balance or a chemical imbalance. This, the name of this fifth video is called Threat Conditioning. Now, again, if you've not watched the previous videos, please watch the previous videos because each video builds upon the previous one. Last video, we talked about the battle for perception, how the promise can be filtered through the threat. This makes the threat bigger and the promise smaller, resulting in an unproportional response to the threat. This picture right here, um, remember, um, kind of, you kind of, this is the unproportional response to the threat. You remember in Numbers 13 and 14, the spies went out to the land, they came back and they gave a false report. They saw the giants in the land, um, and then the Israelites saw themselves as small as grasshoppers, and the promise was smaller. When the promise is filtered through the threat, you become smaller, the promise becomes smaller. And what happened? They flighted from the promise, actually. They flighted from the giants, but the giants were surrounding the promise. Therefore, they actually flighted from the promise. When the promise is filtered through the threat, the mind is chemically imbalanced, resulting in false expectations and false responses. Now, right here, I believe, is a false expectation, a false response. This chart right here, which you've seen, but I've developed a few things here. Um, obviously, homeostasis, the threat, great tribulation, receptor, control center, effector. Now, the response to a promise filtered threat is flight, aka pre trib rapture. Now, we escape the tribulation. Now we come back into peace, stability, and equilibrium, which I believe is a false expectation. Now, the fight or flight response is a physiological reaction in which the body prepares for physical confrontation or to escape from danger. Physical confrontation, post-trib rapture. Escape from danger, pre-trib rapture. Okay, so fight or flight. You have to get back into homeostasis, so you have one of two ways of getting there. Post-trib rapture, pre-trib rapture, physical confrontation, escape from danger. All right, now here is this picture again, um, but now this is the result of threat conditioning your life, right? So um, the threat here and the promise, you have, you have the person, the threat, and the promise. Now when we threat condition our lives, we're no longer fearful. We see ourselves as more conquerors. We we're in peace, stability, equilibrium, homeostasis. Jesus Stasius is the name of our next video, which this person is in Jesus. She's sitting there reading the Bible. She sees the threat. It's smaller. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a threat, but it's smaller. But the promise is bigger. She's bigger. The promise is bigger, bigger and she's ready. Now, this takes time. You're not going to wake up in one morning and the threat's smaller and you're bigger. This takes time. That's why you have to threat condition your life now. Matthew 25. All right. Now this, I believe here, we're, this, we're going to start here from the rest of this video. And then next video, we will, this video, next video, we'll develop this more. But um, so we're at homeostasis. Uh, the threat comes when we come out of homeostasis, receptor, control center, effector. Now the response is not to flight, escape from danger, but now we're fighting preparing for physical confrontation. So to us get back into homeostasis, we need to threat condition our lives. When we do that, we come to peace, stability, and equilibrium. Isaiah 30, 15, I believe, is a result of this. And of course, Habakkuk 3, 16 through 19. Now let's go over a word called fear conditioning. Now, fear conditioning is a fundamental form of learning through which animals learn to predict aversive events and react appropriately to the threats. Now, one author makes this statement on fear learning. In fear-motivated learning, humans learn how to avert fear, and animals learn how to avert putative fear-like state or something that looks like fear to human observer. Therefore, it would really be more adequate to call it threat conditioning. And that is the name of this video. We need to threat condition our lives, creating in our minds emergency responses. Talk about King David. The story of King David is a story about a man who God used 
and prepared through threat conditioning to defeat Goliath and become king. Verse 10, then the Philistines said, the day I defy the armies of Israel, this day I defy the armies of Israel, give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines words, Saul and all of the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. See the picture? Let me ask you a question. If my mind is, is on running away from the battle, how in the world can I prepare to fight? It's impossible. It's impossible. Pre-trib rapture, post-trib rapture. It's very clear. You have to prepare for it. Your mind will not be able to handle the battle if you're not prepared for it. Plain and simple. Fight or fight took place here. The fear paralyzed them and no one could go out and fight. The giant, because of the fear, the perception was skewed. They could not fully discern or see the battle was already won because the fear blinded them. They could not see that this giant or this great tribulation was great opportunity for God to be glorified. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off the sheep from the flock, I went after it. I struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by hair, his, its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from this hand of the Philistine. Saul said to, Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. In the natural, Saul saw the same thing David did, but David knew something that Saul did not. God threat conditioned him for many years. Therefore, preparing David for such a time as this. In the natural, they saw the same thing, but David saw something else, an opportunity for reward, an opportunity to glorify God in great tribulation. Therefore, dopamine was, was released, giving him new vision and new courage. Fear was blinding their vision, creating internal stability. Therefore, the threat produced an unbiblical response, and that was Israel, Israel cowering to the threats of the enemy. Or let's put it another way, Israel flighting from the threats of the enemy. Or let's put it another way, pre-tribulation rapture. Now we're going to read Habakkuk 3.16. We'll give you a little context here of Habakkuk 3.16. Um, Habakkuk prophesied the Babylonian invasion of Judea that took place in the several phases beginning in 605 BC. So Habakkuk was a book comparable to the book of Revelations. Habakkuk was prophesying the destruction of Judea by King Nebuchadnezzar. The Revelations is prophesying the destruction of this age. And let's read, let's read this Habakkuk 3, 16 through 19. <laughs> Very phenomenal. These, this is such a phenomenal set of scriptures. When I heard, my body trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he comes up to the people, he will invade them with his troops. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the oil may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on high, my high hills. <laughs> now check out this commentary. Uh, Matthew Henry's commentary on Habakkuk 3, 16 through 19, and I'll read it. That I might rest in the day of trouble. Note, when we see a day of trouble approaching, it concerns us to provide accordingly and to lay up something in store. By the help of which we may rest in that day. And the best way to make sure we rest for ourselves in the day of trouble is to tremble within ourselves at the word of God and the threatenings of that word. What is he saying? Matthew Henry is literally saying you need to threat condition your life. It's amazing. It's amazing. 
I'm here to proclaim to all that we need to repent, not only of our sins, but to change our minds so that we are so that we are not conformed to this world, but we are transformed by the renewing of our minds so that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. When we are obedient to God's word and prepare our lives according to the word, we can be strengthened to escape, Luke 21, 36, the internal fear and offense that is coming upon the whole world during the great transition in Revelations eleven fifteen. If we escape, we may encounter the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit on earth that will ever come, making the harvest great, Revelations 14. And you will contribute to the harvest by watering the field through signs, wonders, and exploits, Daniel eleven thirty four. We must grow in our spiritual life net life now so that we may overflow into the world during the great tribulation. The best is yet to come. Next video. So God bless you. See you next video.